Welcome back. This is part two of the module on economic and hydrologic modeling. In the previous part of this module, we introduced the concept of a model, and we talked about some models that economists and hydrologists use. In this part of the module, we're going to focus on economic models, and specifically we are going to build an economic model from scratch. The economic model that we're going to build is going to be a model of a farmer's production decision. A farmer's production decision in the real world is really complicated and can be determined by many different factors. Some of these factors may include the price of the crop or crops that the farmer is able to plant, the availability of workers, land, and equipment on the farm, the availability of water to irrigate the crops that the farmer decides to plant, the weather on the farm, any agricultural policies that may affect the farm such as subsidies, a farmer's environmental attitudes, and transportation costs. So thinking about all of these different factors at the same time in analyzing a farmer's production decision is going to be very overwhelming for us and we're not going to be able to include all of these factors in a simple model that can help us understand how farmers make decisions on their farm. So an important question is, how can we simplify this complex decision-making process so that we can build a model that we can actually learn something from? So our task is to simplify the farmer's decision, and we're going to do that by making some assumptions about the farmer. So let's make the following assumptions. Uh, to get us started. Uh, let's first assume that the farmer's goal is to maximize profits. We're also going to assume that the farmer can only grow one type of crop. We're also going to assume that the only variable cost that the farmer has to pay is the cost of energy required to pump groundwater for irrigation. And finally we're going to assume that we can summarize all fixed costs in one variable just some definitions uh, regarding the assumptions that we just made. Uh, variable costs are costs associated with inputs on the farm that can be varied in the short run. So these are costs of inputs that the farmer can change very easily. Fixed costs on the other hand are costs that are associated with inputs that are fixed in the short run. These are costs on the farm that are generally fixed over a season. For example, the availability of equipment, or the number of workers hired, or the type of land that is available to the farmer. So these are the assumptions that we're going to make to start out with, and some of these are indeed uh, big simplifications. For example, the assumption that the farmer can only grow one type of crop is probably not particularly reflective of reality, but it is going to help us start out building a model. So let's go on right ahead. Our model is going to be in the form of an equation. And so in order to build an equation we're going to have to choose some variable names. And these uh, names are going to be for the different variables that will enter the equation. So the farmer's profits we're going to represent with the variable name pi. Pi is usually the Greek letter that economists use in order to represent profits. The area of land planted with this one crop that the farmer can plant, is, we're going to represent with the letter capital L, L for land. It is always uh, convenient to choose variable names that will help you remember the variable that it represents. We're going to represent the volume of water applied to the crop by the farmer with a W. The price of the crop in the market, the price at which the farmer can sell this crop with the variable name P. We're going to have a crop yield function which takes on as an input the volume of water applied to the crop. So this function is Y of W and as you would expect as you increase the volume of water applied to a crop your crop yield will also increase. 
we will also have two variables that represent cost. C sub W is going to be the cost of pumping a unit of water. Remember that the cost of pumping a unit of water is the only variable cost in this model per our assumptions. And C sub F is going to represent our fixed costs. Using subscripts in variable names is usually an easy way to differentiate two variables that are otherwise the same. In this case, both C sub W and C sub F refer to costs, but the subscripts allow us to differentiate them because given that one is for, uh, for water and the other is for fixed costs. Also, when we talk about the farmer's profits, we know by definition that profit is going to be equal revenue minus costs. The revenue is going to be the amount of money that the farmer makes by selling his crop. And the costs uh, is the money that the farmer must pay in order to produce those crops. So moving along, this again is the list of variables that we just defined. And this is the definition of profit. And we want to derive an equation to represent profit. For the farmer based on these variables. So using these variables we can say now that the farmer's profit equation is going to be first of all the revenue. Okay so the revenue again is the money that the farmer makes off of the sale of the crop. And so what is that going to be? It is going to be the, the crop yield which is given by our crop yield function y of w but then we multiply that by the price of a crop. Okay, so the y of w gives us the number of bushels that the farmer can produce on an acre, given the amount of water that he chooses to apply to the crop. And we multiply that quantity of bushels by the price per bushel. And that gives us the revenue per acre. Okay, but we also have to subtract costs from revenue in order to get profit and the costs are going to be the quantity of water that the farmer decides to pump in order to irrigate his crop multiplied by the cost of pumping each unit of water okay so c sub w times w gives us the total cost of pumping the water we want to multiply this term in brackets by the area of land planted in the crop, right? Because this quantity in the brackets is for each acre, but the farmer is going to plant L acres, so we need to multiply the per acre revenue minus costs by the number of acres planted. And then from this, we need to subtract out the fixed costs. So this is our farmer profit equation. So, in our, so to summarize, uh, in this part of the module, we went through the process of building a model in order to learn more about a farmer's production decision. And in order to build this model, we made some simplifying assumptions about the farmer's production decision. We chose suitable variable names to represent these factors that determine a farmer's profit. And we went ahead and derive the farmer profit equation. Now we would like you to conduct an exercise based on what we just went through in this part of the module. Again we made some simplifying assumptions about how a farmer makes a decision on his farm and one of those simplifying assumptions was that he could only plant one kind of crop. But now suppose that a farmer has the choice of planting two different kinds of crops instead of just one kind of crop. So now we are removing one of the simplifying assumptions of our model. And your task now is going to be to write down a list of variables that you would need in order to write this farmer's profit equation. So the profit equation of a farmer who is able to plant two different kinds of crops. And one hint that we can provide you here is that, uh, again, you can exploit subscripts in order to make it easier for you to choose what variable names to use for each variable. For example, you can use W sub 1 for the volume of water applied to one crop and W sub 2 for the volume of water applied to the other crop.
So once you have picked the variables that are associated with this particular farmer's decision, try to write down the farmer's profit equation. Good luck.